Why do we want to control even what's outside our influence? In times of anxiety, spirituality is often neglected, hence pushing the illusion that we can control everything. The belief that we are fully in control of our actions, thoughts, and emotions is common, yet it only remains a harmful notion. Beyond our conscious awareness, the unconscious mind silently shapes our behavior, drawing from a reservoir of experiences and memories. Together, we will unravel the web of self-deception, where the paradoxical notion that we are the architects of our destiny clashes with the reality that much unfolds in the shadows of the unconscious. Let's venture into the depths of the mind's labyrinth, debunking the illusion of control and embracing the enigma that lies beneath the surface of our conscious awareness. The unconscious mind's influence operates with an almost mystical power, silently defining our thoughts and actions. When we closely look at this enigmatic realm, we uncover the subtleties that shape our existence. Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung once remarked, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Indeed, the unconscious mind functions as a complex director, scripting our responses to the world with a profound influence that often eludes our conscious grasp. Consider the mind as an iceberg, with the conscious mind merely representing the tip visible above the water. The vast expanse beneath, concealed from immediate view, symbolizes the unconscious. It is here, beneath the surface, that the roots of our behaviors and choices intertwine with the rich soil of experiences and memories. In this exploration, we ought to peel back the layers to reveal the automatic, by default nature of the unconscious mind. It operates seamlessly, like a well-rehearsed symphony, shaping our actions and words with a precision that escapes our conscious scrutiny. As renowned psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud once stated, the mind is like an iceberg. It floats with one-seventh of its bulk above the water. This analogy perfectly encapsulates the paradox. The majority of our mental processes, orchestrated by the unconscious, remain submerged, elusive to our conscious gaze. In our journey through the realm of the unconscious, we confront the perplexing notion that we are often oblivious to the very forces shaping our behaviors and thoughts. It is an ironic twist, as the influential psychologist Burris Frederick Skinner remarked, the real problem is not whether machines think, but whether men do. Unbeknownst to us, the unconscious mind operates ceaselessly, steering the ship of our consciousness through the vast sea of experiences. However, navigating the paradox of the unconscious is no simple task. As neuroscientist David Eagleman sagely notes, your conscious mind is the last to know what your unconscious mind is doing. The challenges lie not only in understanding the depths of the unconscious, but also in attempting to exert conscious control over its elusive workings. Like a riddle wrapped in an enigma, the unconscious mind eludes our grasp, defying attempts to comprehend or regulate its intricate processes fully. The mind presents a vast landscape that eludes conscious awareness. From the hidden chambers of the unconscious, we confront the challenges inherent in gaining control over these unseen forces, recognizing the inherent mystery that shrouds the very core of our being. But what causes our actions, thoughts, and feelings to submit to the whims of the subconscious mind. Let us discover all of that in the next chapters. Biases and the unconscious expose the intricate tapestry of our cognitive processes, revealing the deeply ingrained nature of biases within our psyche. As psychologist Daniel Kahneman astutely observed, thinking fast and slow, our minds operate on two levels, with fast, intuitive thinking often giving rise to biases that lie hidden in the recesses of the unconscious. As psychologist Daniel Kahneman astutely observed, thinking fast and slow, our minds operate on two levels, with fast, intuitive thinking often giving rise to biases that lie hidden in the recesses of the unconscious. Unconscious biases, shaped by cultural, societal, and personal influences, 
mould our perceptions and judgments in ways we might not readily acknowledge. To quote Mazarin Banaji, a notable social psychologist, the mind is a different seeking machine, and it is not in our human nature to embrace or feel comfortable with difference. This innate inclination to categorize and stereotype others stems from the unconscious, creating biases that determine our interactions and decisions. Yet delving into the concept of unconscious biases unveils a daunting reality, the inherent difficulty in altering these deeply rooted mental patterns. The words of Nobel laureate and behavioral economist Richard Thaler echo the challenge. Biases are persistent, even when you know about them. The very nature of these biases, operating below the conscious radar, renders them resistant to rational persuasion or intentional change. The pervasive impact of unconscious biases on our judgment reverberates through various facets of life. From hiring decisions to interpersonal relationships, biases silently influence our choices, often leading to unintended consequences. In the words of Maya Angelou, we all should know that diversity makes for a rich tapestry. Biases, however, can taint this tapestry, distorting our view of others and limiting the richness that diversity brings. In this exploration, we confront the challenging terrain of biases deeply embedded in our unconscious, acknowledging the persistent difficulty in altering these mental constructs. It prompts reflection on how biases, subtle and insidious, shape our perceptions and decisions, urging us to navigate the complexities of our unconscious minds with a mindful awareness of the biases that reside within. Now, we need to take a look at how society itself shapes our subconscious, and most importantly, how it affects our daily lives and decisions. As the ancient sage Lao Tzu wisely observed, watch your thoughts, they become words. Watch your words, they become actions. This ancient wisdom captures the essence of how the unconscious mind, influenced by external factors, shapes our behaviors. In the vast theater of social environments, the unconscious mind dons the role of a chameleon, adapting to the collective rhythm of the surroundings. The Greek philosopher Heraclitus, known for his insights into change, expressed, character is destiny. Our character, deeply rooted in the unconscious, molds and is molded by the social milieu, influencing the trajectory of our destinies. Mimicry, a subtle working of the unconscious, finds its roots in the ancient wisdom of the Stoic philosopher Epictetus, who remarked, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. Mimicry, a form of silent communication, reflects the unconscious inclination to align with social norms, fostering a sense of belonging. Social bonding, a crucial component of our unconscious, is aptly summarized by the words of Aristotle, man is by nature a social animal. The unconscious mind, seeking connection and acceptance, drives behavior patterns that contribute to social relationships. It is within these bonds that the unconscious finds both influence and expression, shaping our responses to the collective consciousness of the social sphere. Confucius, the Chinese philosopher, wisely articulated, is it not a pleasure having learned something to try it out? Is it not a joy to have friends come from afar? Is it not gentlemanly not to take offense when others fail to appreciate your abilities? In these words, we discern the intertwining of memory and behavior as the unconscious mind stores lessons from the past, guiding our responses in the present. The unconscious, like an ancient library, preserves memories and experiences that shape our understanding of the world. The Roman philosopher Seneca cautioned, he who fears death will never do anything worth of a man who is alive. Unconscious memories, whether of triumph or trauma, become key elements to our being, influencing our responses to life's challenges. Yet, as the unconscious mind acts as a custodian of our experiences, it also conceals forgotten traumas that cast shadows on our present actions and emotions. The words of the ancient Greek playwright Aeschylus resonate, in our sleep, pain which cannot forget falls drop by drop upon the heart until, 
in our own despair against our will comes wisdom through the awful grace of God. The unconscious, holding the keys to forgotten pain, orchestrates our emotional landscape, revealing the impact of these concealed traumas on our daily lives. The renowned Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu observed, he who conquers others is strong, he who conquers himself is mighty. In these words, we glimpse the profound challenge encapsulated in the exploration of sub-personalities, internal fragments that vie for dominance within the unconscious. The notion of sub-personalities echoed in various spiritual traditions recognizes the multifaceted nature of the self. In the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna imparts, for the self is the friend of him who has conquered himself, and the self is in enmity with him who has not conquered himself. Here, the internal struggle becomes a cosmic battle, portraying the enduring conflict between different aspects of the self dwelling within the unconscious. In the Buddhist tradition, the concept of anatta, or non-self, echoes the understanding of sub-personalities. The Buddha's teachings highlight the impermanence of the self, recognizing the ever-changing nature of our internal personas. As the Buddha said, your work is to discover your work and then, with all your heart, to give yourself to it. The internal contradictions within the unconscious mirror, the eternal struggle for balance and harmony. The Greek philosopher Heraclitus, known for his emphasis on change, declared, the only constant is change. In the realm of sub-personalities, this change manifests as an ongoing battle for dominance and unity within the self. This exploration into sub-personalities is a journey through the myriad facets of the unconscious, where conflicting fragments coalesce into the complex mosaic of the human psyche. The challenge lies in acknowledging these internal contradictions and the pursuit of internal harmony, a harmonious integration of the disparate elements within the self. The emotional unconscious is often symbolized as the chimp brain, and the rational conscious mind is often symbolized as what tells us what we should be doing, clash. In the biblical realm, the Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Romans, poignantly captures this internal conflict. I do not understand what I do, but what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate, I do. This ancient sentiment echoes the enduring struggle between our impulsive, emotional tendencies and our conscious aspirations for rationality and control. The chimp brain, akin to Paul's inner conflict, represents the primal, instinctual self that propels us toward impulsive reactions. It operates in the realm of immediate emotions, a domain where desires and aversions often override the cool calculations of reason. This idea is nowadays summarized in the popular adage, it's wrong, but it feels right, which showcases that even though we know something is not beneficial for us, we still indulge in it. Whether it's a vice, a relationship where we feel unappreciated, or a habit that pushes away from our higher purpose, these patterns are dictated by the chimp brain. As Joe Dispenza points out, the body has adapted to a habit, that is, a sequence of actions and emotions that the body itself carries out better than your conscious mind itself. However, when you try to stop this pattern, your body signals you're out of schedule, further locking you in a perpetual cycle of despair. In the pursuit of understanding this conflict, we find solace in the words of the philosopher Blaise Pascal, who remarked, the heart has its reasons of which reason knows nothing. Here, Pascal encapsulates the dichotomy between the emotional heart rooted in the chimp brain and the rational mind, emphasizing that the two realms operate with distinct logic. The chimp brain, an evolutionary remnant, responds rapidly to stimuli, occasionally leading to actions inconsistent with our conscious intentions. As the Apostle Paul grappled with his inner struggles, modern psychology acknowledges the ceaseless tension between our emotional, impulsive responses and our rational, conscious efforts to align with our values. In the pursuit of understanding the unconscious, the ancient philosopher Socrates imparts, the unexamined life is not worth living. This timeless wisdom underscores the importance of self-reflection, 
a cornerstone strategy for navigating the labyrinth of the unconscious. Drawing inspiration from the biblical proverb, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it, we recognize the heart as a symbolic repository of unconscious influences. Guarding our hearts involves a vigilant awareness of the unconscious forces shaping our thoughts, emotions, and actions. Reflection, a practice advocated by thinkers throughout history, emerges as a powerful tool in navigating the unconscious. As Confucius wisely stated, it is not the failure of others to appreciate your abilities that should trouble you, but rather your failure to appreciate theirs. Through reflection, we confront our fears, desires, and biases, illuminating the shadows within our unconscious. Dream analysis, rooted in the teachings of ancient cultures and revered figures like Carl Jung, unveils the mysterious language of the unconscious. As Jung expressed, your vision will become clear only when you can look into your own heart. Who looks outside, dreams. Who looks inside, awakes. Dream analysis becomes a portal to the inner realms, providing insights into the unconscious symbols and narratives that shape our waking lives. Drawing from the profound insights of ancient Chinese philosophy, Confucius encourages us with the words, learning without thought is labor lost. Thought without learning is perilous. In our pursuit of reshaping the unconscious, thoughtful learning becomes a foundation upon which we construct a positive transformation. The importance of surrounding oneself with positive influences emerges as a cornerstone strategy. The Stoic philosopher Seneca implores, he who is brave is free, emphasizing the courage needed to select positive environments consciously. By curating our surroundings, we influence the stimuli that infiltrate our unconscious, fostering a fertile ground for positive growth. Conscious alteration of responses to stimuli aligns with Viktor Frankl's poignant insight. When we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. Expanding the space between stimulus and response allows us the power to consciously guide our unconscious reactions toward positivity and purpose. In the journey of rewiring the unconscious, the ancient Greek philosopher Thales offers guidance with his words, the most difficult thing in life is to know yourself. Self-analysis, a pivotal tool, helps unravel the intricate threads of the unconscious, fostering a profound understanding of the self and paving the way for intentional transformation. Curiosity, a trait celebrated across cultures, becomes our compass for understanding the unconscious mind. Albert Schweitzer's words resonate, the purpose of human life is to serve and to show compassion and the will to help others. Cultivating curiosity allows us to explore the depths of our unconscious, promoting a continuous journey of self-discovery and growth. Choosing positive influences, consciously altering responses, engaging in self-analysis and nurturing curiosity become the tools that unlock the latent potential within reshaping our unconscious minds and fostering transformative growth. Embracing the wisdom of the ancient Roman philosopher Seneca, true happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. We recognize the unconscious as the silent orchestrator shaping our experience of the present. In daily life, the unconscious operates as a guiding force, influencing decisions, reactions, and the overall quality of our experiences. The words of the American psychologist Abraham Maslow echo this sentiment. The story of the human race is the story of men and women selling themselves short. Here, the unconscious plays a pivotal role in either constraining or liberating our potential, depending on our understanding and engagement with its intricacies. Acknowledging the importance of the unconscious enriches our daily lives by fostering self-awareness and a deeper connection with the multifaceted layers of our being. In the words of the French philosopher Voltaire, judge a man by his questions rather than by his answers. The unconscious prompts these questions, unveiling insights that contribute to a more meaningful and fulfilling daily existence. 
Reflecting on the words of the Chinese philosopher Zhuangzi, flow with whatever may happen and let your mind be free. Stay centered by accepting whatever you are doing. This is the ultimate. We recognize the unconscious as a source of centeredness amid life's complexities. Concluding our journey through the complexities of the mind, we acknowledge the nuanced interplay between conscious intentions and the subtle orchestrations of the unconscious. Navigating biases, social influences, memories, and the clash between emotion and rationality reveals a dynamic field where we need to reflect upon our thought patterns to build the lives we want. In the wisdom of sages and practical strategies lies a compass. Humility and self-awareness inspired by Socratic ideals guide us through the labyrinthine terrains of sub-personalities and internal conflicts. Rewiring the unconscious demands conscious efforts, drawing inspiration from timeless advice, know thyself, surround yourself with positivity, and consciously shape your responses.